Near this spot in 1750, Red Jacket was born. Born with the name Oteshiana, or Always Ready, Red Jacket became the chief of the Seneca tribe and a leader among all of the tribes of the Iroquois. When he became chief, he became known as Sagoyewata, or he keeps on awake. He earned his nickname from the British because of the red jacket he always wore. The Waterloo Library and Historical Society established this monument in 1891. After a long time interest among leaders throughout the village of Waterloo in erecting a monument to honor the illustrious chief. The monument, which is located in the hamlet of Canoga near the modern day intersection of State Route 89 and Cemetery Road, just beyond the limits of the Canoga Cemetery, was unveiled during ceremonies that took place October 14, 1891. Dr. Samuel R. Wells, president of the society, gave a short address, followed by George S. Conover, a local historian and authority on Native American affairs. William C. Bryant, famous for his knowledge of Native American lore and the life and times of Red Jacket, also gave an oration. The ceremony also included a delegation of Iroquois from Canada and a delegation of Senecas from the Cattaraugus Reservation. Red Jacket became famous among the Senecas and all tribes of the Iroquois, as well as the white settlers through his eloquence. He was one of the chiefs invited by President George Washington to attend a conference at Philadelphia in 1791. Following an address Red Jacket gave at this convention, Washington presented him with a large silver medal that he wore until his death. Red Jacket visited Waterloo on several occasions. During one of these tours, he reportedly mentioned six big trees on Locust Street where tribal councils took place and emphasized the importance of the decisions reached around the council fires. During another tour in the spring of 1829, Red Jacket passed through Waterloo on his way to Washington. He made a short speech in which he declared, I was born over there by the big spring and pointed in the direction of Canoga. At the request of Gary V. Sackett, who had a personal acquaintance with Red Jacket, the chief pointed out the spot where he was born near Canoga. In later years, Sackett vowed to place a monument there in honor of the chief. Less than a year later, Red Jacket died on January 20th, 1830 near Buffalo, where he had established a home and a log cabin. He was buried in Buffalo's Forest Lawn Cemetery. In October 1890, Martha M. Hyler wrote a letter to Fred H. Furness, long interested in a monument, proposing to help with such a memorial. The trustees of the Waterloo Library and Historical Society voted to accept the woman's help and raised nearly $1,500 with a fair at the Academy of Music in December 1890. The society subsequently made a contract with W. and J. Littlejohn of Seneca Falls to make the monument to be placed near Canoga. The cost of the monument and the ceremony was just under $1,700. If you want to learn more about this and other local history topics, stop by the Terwilliger Museum or the National Memorial Day Museum.